All right, I want to start this section by looking at some nutritional labels. Now, in this section of the exam, you might be presented with a nutritional label, or it could be some type of graph or a chart or some form of data presented in a similar way to this nutritional label. And you'll need to identify certain parts of the information and then do calculations based on the type of question that you've got. So it could be it could be any type of calculation in this section. It might be a percentage that you need to work out. It could be a simple multiplication or division. Um, you might have to convert some sort of measurement to a different measurement. But let's start with the nutritional label. And I just want to give you a really quick rundown on how these labels work um, because it did create a little bit of a challenge for some members in their exam when they were confronted with this label. Now, if you have a fitness or certainly a nutritional background, uh, this will be your bread and butter. But for others, it might not be so simple to read a nutritional panel. But let's have a look at some of the fundamentals. Uh, the first thing is that the information tells you how many servings per pack there is in this particular product. So here it says this tells you how many servings there are in the whole packet. Well, there could be one serving, I guess if you poured the whole box, let's call it cornflakes, you poured the whole box into a massive bowl, there might only be one serving. Or if you just put a handful uh, of cornflakes into a bowl, you might have 20 servings. But that's what the next line is all about. It tells you the recommended serving size. Okay, so 33 grams is the recommended serving size for this product. And if you followed that recommendation, you would have eight servings in the box. All right, so if we go to per servings, so again, remembering that per serving, we're talking about per 33 grams here. Um, per serving, you're going to have uh, this information here in terms of nutritional value and content. All right, so let me just get rid of that so we can keep it neatish. Okay, so again, this tells you on the side here uh, the nutrition elements in a single serve of this particular product. So for example, out of a 33 gram serving, you would have uh, 1.3 grams of that is saturated fat. Or if you wanted to know how much salt or sodium was in the product for every serving of 33 grams, there's 20 milligrams of sodium in the product. Okay, so that's per serving, and we need to make sure that we distinguish the difference between per serving and the next one, which is really, really helpful, and that is per 100 grams. So all they've done in the second column here is to take the first column and I guess extrapolate it out to 100 grams and then round it off nicely at 100 grams. And what you might remember from the percentages um, tutorial videos that we went through earlier is that per 100 just simply means per cent, percent. So if we look at any of the numbers down the side here, these numbers are a percentage of 100. Okay, now if we look at, now milligrams is a little bit different because that's a different measurement to 100 grams. Now kilojoules is a little different to grams. Okay, so it's, it's a different unit of measurement. But all of these other ones here that are measured in grams are simply a direct percentage. So an important one that we, we should know about when we're looking at these labels is the good old nasty sugar. And this second column it tells you that out of every 100 grams of this product, 30.7 grams or 30.7% is made up of sugar. Okay, so that column can be really handy when you're answering questions around, you know, what percentage of this, what percentage of that in, you know, in one serving. Uh, and so we can make use of that information to help us deal with percentage-based questions. All right, so I just wanted to give you a quick tour of the label so you understand where the fundamentals are. But a couple of example questions might be uh, if Fred's very hungry this morning and he's going to have two servings of his favorite bowl of cornflakes, uh, I don't know, how many grams uh, of how many grams of saturated fat is you going to consume this morning before he heads off to work? So he's having two serves. Now that's the recommended for one. So he's having two serves. So therefore it will be 66 grams. And how much saturated fat? Well, this is 1.3 in one serve, but we would have to do the same. In two serves, it would be 2.6 grams of saturated fat. So there might be a question like that, where they're being a little tricky by saying, oh, he's so hungry, he's having two bowls this morning. All right, so something along those lines. Uh, it could be that they're asking for a percentage. You know, what percentage of 
of Fred's breakfast uh, is made up of sugar. Well, that's easy. We just go straight to this column and we know that that means uh, 100 grams, uh, 30.7 out of 100 means 30.7%. So we can literally just go down and find it and put the answer in. Now, the other thing is that you might get a question about a percentage, but they talk about per serving. Now, maybe trying to throw you off a little bit here. Uh, Fred's had a serving of cornflakes for breakfast. What percentage? He said one serving. They might try to emphasize that one serving. What percentage of that serving is made up of sugar? Well, here it says 10.1 per serving. But remember that going across to here is just extrapolating that. So it's keeping everything proportionate. All we need to do is go, well, what is that as a percentage? It's 30.7. Okay, so we can easily use that column, just simply jump across to get the percentage, even though they might be emphasizing, oh, he's only had one serving, therefore what percentage is it? Because 10 grams of 33 is the same as 100 grams and 30.7. Okay, so 10.1 is 30% of 33. If you just look at that sort of, you know, I guess logically, 33, 10, it's about a third, it's about 30%. All right, so just in case there's a little confusion about, well, if it asks for the percentage, I can use this column, but what if they specifically say only one serving? Well, they might say he's so hungry he had five servings. Okay, this percentage is still going to help you answer any of those percentage-based uh, questions. You just have to read the question really carefully, of course, to make sure that that's, in fact, what they're asking for. Okay, another thing that might come up is the, uh, the serving size in terms of kilojoules. Now, kilojoules is just a unit of energy. There are, just for interest sake, it might be handy to, to keep this in mind, 4.2... Let's, let's do, oh, I'll do an equation. 550 divided by 4.2 4 is about 130, 131, 131 calories. Okay, so if you take the kilojoules and you divide it by 4.2, you'll get the number of calories in that particular unit. Okay, some of that labels will actually give you in brackets underneath here, the actual calories, but if it doesn't, and I'm not sure you would get this because it relies on you knowing this, this equation, uh, or they may actually display that down the bottom somewhere, a little comparison, um, but you may get something along those lines. But the question that I wanted to share, just in case you get something like this, uh, and again, down the bottom there might be additional information. The recommended calories per day for an adult is 2,000. Okay, so it might ask you, to determine what one serving of cornflakes in the morning is as a percentage, as a percentage of your daily calorie intake recommendation. Okay, so if it did ask for that, we really need to be able to convert this to calories. Okay, because if this is calories down here, then we would need to convert that to calories there. So 131 divided by 2,000. Okay, that's 0 0.06, so times 100. 6.55. So 6.55% of your daily allowance has just been spent uh, on one bowl of cornflakes in the morning. So you might get something like that. I'm just trying to go through a couple of different scenarios. Um, in terms of the types of questions that you might get around nutritional labels. All right, well, I hope that helps. I think um, that's probably enough, otherwise we'll end up going around in circles. But if you've got your head around how these nutritional labels work and what each of the columns are, uh, the important sections that you need to um, be understanding of, then really you just need to read the question carefully and identify what is it actually asking? What calculation do I need to do? And then based on some of the previous training that we've done, we should have the tools to be able to do those calculations. All right. And again, if there's uh, nutritional labels and charts and formulas and so on, they often provide additional information like this um, so that you can work out the calculation. All right. I, I, don't, I don't think that you would be expected to know that uh, 4.2 is the conversion, I suppose, from kilojoules to calories. 
So look for additional information that might be in the smaller print down the bottom uh, to help you, you know, make some of those calculations. All right, let's move on. We've got other uh, topics to cover, so I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.